All right, guys. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I usually don't uh, do these videos when there's people in the house, and um, uh, someone had walked in the house, so I paused it. Okay, but I know where we left off, and so let's go to it. Uh, we left off. We were doing um, about to schedule the um, the planes. Okay, after we had labeled them, and we were right here. Okay, so this is where we were at. So we got our planes labeled, excuse me. Um, and then um, we have all our routes uh, uh, already uh, bought and everything to go. Now, one thing about doing a seven plane, seven route setup is that you're basically, you're going to put a flight, uh, one route on each plane every day. Um, but they're not going to leave on the same day. So let me show you. Let's do this on Monday. So I'm going to click on Monday. Okay, so here's my Monday plane. And then I'm going to hit Schedule. Okay, and then... Um, actually, I'm just going to tap on any one of these because it doesn't matter. One really nice thing about this is that if you, have, if you just buy your routes... They come up down here, right up here. And um, so this is the whole 168 concept, right? Hour 1, 24, hour 1, 24, all the way down here. So basically this is hour 1, this is hour 168. Okay, so basically the whole point of doing a 168 is to keep the plane in the air at all times. Not only that, but you also have full utilization. Okay, so let me that that means that you would see this right here, a hundred percent used. So I'll go ahead and just backspace this, and I will show you what I mean. I have some other 168s on here, and you can see here. Um, there's one right there. They're not in order, but oh well, that's because I got all hubs. Let me just go to CGK. And so you can see I have some other circuits on here, right? Um, if I tap on one of these, and then you'll see that this guy says 100% used. The reason is, is because if I hit schedule, and then I just tap on any one of these, it don't matter. You can see that this guy's full. Okay? It's full. And so that's what we're going to do with the new ones, the new routes that we just bought. And, um, and that's how we're going to do that. Um, the other thing about doing seven routes with seven planes is simply this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you back to this picture real quick. And you remember this. I went ahead and did this while the, vi uh, while the video was paused. Um, but remember when we had our seven routes and then I had my hours on here right so uh, 27 being the longest and then 19 being the smallest notice how my demands are almost the same in fact look at Johannesburg and Nairobi they're the same which is kind of rare but the point to this is that the reason why you want to have seven planes on seven our seven routes on seven planes all week is because when you rotate these every 24 hours, and I'm going to show you what I mean in a minute, is that all these demands will go down evenly. Okay, because if you have just four or five, that means you have longer routes. Uh, now you have routes that are literally taking up a whole day so let's say you have a flight that leaves on monday and then well you know what let me just show you because i actually have this in my first hub uh, my first hub um, was um, jfk and when i was starting i was you know like you guys i was just putting a lot of short little routes in there and um and I was just kind of going from there. 
my longest, my first longest route from JFK was Mumbai, uh, which is Bombay. And this is why, uh, now it's not bad now, but I mean, it's still always room for improvement. But you can see here, if you look at this, um, this flight here on Monday leaves on Monday. It lands on Tuesday, and then um, this one land. This one takes off on Tuesday, and then comes on Wednesday. And then this one Wednesday lands on Friday or uh, uh, Thursday. Now this one isn't too bad because I actually don't have any. It actually doesn't take up the whole day, but I actually have another route, and I think it's Johannesburg. But um, but there's another route on here that I want to say it's Johannesburg. Don't hold me to that. I'm just I'm doing this off the cuff, so I wasn't planning on showing this to you. But I'm trying to explain to you why. Um, let me see. Here's this. Oh, here you go. Look at this one. So you'll notice that this plane leaves on Thursday, but it takes up all of Friday and then lands on Saturday. So that means on Friday, I have demands remaining on it for Friday. And see, that's the, that's the sticky with when you're doing really, really long routes and they bleed into a whole day. And then they don't land till the next day. That means the the day that it flew, that it never landed, that day now has demands for that day. So now you have to later to try to fill that gap. Now you got gaps or you have demand offsets all over the place. When you do um, when you do a seven route, it's just systematically the way that the way that ours are because it's not going to do that um you won't have that problem right because they're 27 26 24 25 i'm always taking off every day so my demands will all go evenly and that's why you want to well, that's why you you rotate the plane the, like nim i will take off on the first plane on monday and then on the second plane, NIM takes off on Tuesday. And then ABV takes off on Wednesday. And so far, you'll see this. This is why it's always a good thing to have a visual because it kind of makes sense when you see it done. So let's do it. So now, uh, let me turn this off. Okay, I'm trying to get that in there. Did it go in there? Yep, I did. Okay. So now, let's go back to our planes. Use. And now I'm going to hit Monday, which is right here. And then I'm going to hit Schedule. And then I'm just going to tap on any of them. It don't matter because I'm going to use this right here. This is what I like to use right here. Um, and then I'm just going to go to our first one, which is NIM. So you see there's, there's NIM, there's one, two, three, and it goes up because I have it set to opening date. So if you have it set to opening date, then it puts them in order the way you bought them. So that's why when I say when you buy your routes, write them down, and then you can use this, and then it's really easy to follow. A lot of people have difficulty with this. Um, I get it. It's, you know, when you're first doing this for the first time, the, the numbers really throw you off until you actually do one, um, and, or if it's explained to you how it's done, then it does, uh, does kind of make a little sense um, uh, once, once you see it. So let's do NIM. We're going to do that right here. And then uh, A, B, V, that was our second one. I'm going to put that right here. And then LAD was here. Oh, and by the way, since I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this tapped. I'm going to show you 
how um, to read this. Okay, so you can see here, this tells you your outgoing and this tells you your return. Okay, so now in this case, uh, let me put that there. Um, let me do F I H. And so you can, I'm going to leave this tapped in here so you can see. So I'm going out with everybody, but then I'm coming back with less of what was that number? Six, um, what was the number of our plane? Uh, 1216. Okay, I remember it's 608 times two. Okay, that's how you got to look at these numbers. So that's why you don't want to get negatives. Uh, sorry about that. It just every now and then it does that. Um, oh, come on. There we go. And then the next one's going to be NSI. And then the next one is Johannesburg. And then the last one is Nairobi. And no gaps. This plane will never stop flying. Okay. Um, so here's the cool thing. Okay, here's where everybody gets confused. Okay, so once you have your routes in place, you see this nice little button down here? It says copy this schedule. Here's where it gets super, super easy. So we know we're going to offset this first flight 24 hours and then this down here and then this down here and so on and so on. So you do copy the schedule and now I have now the cool thing is is that you don't have to worry about these things getting lost because it doesn't um, it will not show you different planes. You can only do this on one plane. This is very key that when you do a 168, you use the same plane. You keep it the same configuration. Because remember, the demands are going to be a little different. So if you really have them very different, the numbers are way off. Hopefully they're not. But if they are, if you try to route a plane on you know, one plane like this, and then on, on another one on a 787. Obviously, you can't do it on this. This little feature right here only allows same plane type. So if you're doing automatic, it just won't let you do it. But you, there's nothing stopping you from doing all this manually. But then, um, you know, obviously, you know, you can put them in different planes. Um, I've actually done that, but I've only done it with like the with like the remaining demands. When I have like maybe 300 or something like that, I might use another plane or something like that. Um, but that's in a rare scenario. So what we're going to do here, you see Tuesday. So Tuesday, and sometimes they put this in order, sometimes they don't. This is where you got to slow down and just take your time. But this is key. Tuesday remember we just did Monday we did Monday we're copying it so you're not going to see Monday on this list so I'll do and this is why I label them the way I do so I do Tuesday 24 hours Wednesday two days Thursday three days Friday and Friday's on here there it is Friday what, what was uh, what was Thursday three days Friday's four Saturday is five and then finally Sunday and I gotta move this up a little bit this is six as if the game developers know about the 168. Notice it doesn't say seven. It goes out. It goes only goes to six. 
And the reason why it says six and not seven is because I've already done Monday. Remember, Monday is not on this list. So there you go. So now what it's going to do is that it's going to shift everything down by 24 hours. Okay? And um, so I have everything checkmarked. All the days, everything is good. You always want to make sure everything's okay. You don't want to rush this. And then hit confirm. And then you get this nice little pop-up saying, hey, you're about to copy the schedule of this, that, and the other. Of course, I know. I can see my airplane names. That's why I like naming them the way like this. That way it's easy for me to see. And then I'll hit validate. Boom. I'm done. I just routed seven planes, uh, or excuse me, seven routes on seven planes with all over the place. And then I'll hit finish. That plane is going to take off in two hours. No rush. Now, something I discovered yesterday. So you always want, if you want to verify, the easiest way to verify is just to come to your planes um, and then your uh, routes, change this to your hub. Or you can do it from the hub itself. It's up to you. And then I'll do, oops. Ah. Come on. Um, use up, use down. Okay. So there is 12. And you can see it. They're not in order. I wish they were. Um, there's 12 Saturday, 12-1. Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. There they all are. Now, what I'm looking at is the utilization. It says 100% all the way. If there was a route missing, for whatever reason, the, ser the server had a hiccup, latency in the network, you know, whatever bad internet connection and one of your routes didn't go through you'll see the usage on here it'll say like 88 percent okay that means that one of the routes but hey you you still want to know if it's leaving let's look at wednesday wednesday means is that i should have that i should have uh something leaving on uh, on that wednesday and you see nim remember nim was our main Monday takeoff. Remember, uh, this was my Monday. So I hit uh, Wednesday, and there it is. Okay? And everything's in order. NIM, AVB, LAD, FISH, NSI, Johannesburg, and NBO. So if I went back, just again, if you just want to verify this, um, you can, and it's not a problem. And I can say... Oh, you see, it doesn't put them in order that they are. Where are they? Use. <sighs> I don't know why it doesn't. There they are. So let's just say I want to look at Sunday. That means that NIM should be on Sunday in this in this plane. And I go to schedule. And just hit any of these. It don't matter. And then there it is. There's NIM Sunday. And that's how you verify. So um, so now I can, and if you want to see what's what, I can hit um, the uh, network, which is the world, and then hit my network management, come to Jakarta. And then I can, the new routes are always on the bottom. Now, I just put this on here. Uh, real quick here, guys. Um, try not to get hung up that it says zero. Remember, I just put them on. Don't forget these planes have got to go on, come back, go on, come back, go on, come back. So just let it do its rotation a couple times. Just wait a few hours. You'll start to see some numbers there. If you can't wait, go ahead and tap on like NIM. I should see. And then what I usually do is this. 
I always come over here to typical week and typical week will show me what's what and there are all my planes okay so uh, what I can do if I even though it's showing zero okay uh, I can tap on Monday and see what that is 4.8 million okay I'm clearly not done with this uh, you can see by the color codes it's red it will stay red to 50%. That's your color code. 50% uh, and then from 50 to 80 it'll be yellow. And then from 80 to 100 it'll be green. And that goes the same with um, um, utiliz utiliz plane utilization, right? So um, if you're between uh, 50 and down it'll be red. If it's 50 to technically what, 79 or 80 it'll be yellow and then from 80 to 100 it'll be green okay that's that's the way the colors work um, and so that's that's a 168 uh, real quick here while I have your attention let's look at um, services and um, and um, research and employee training real quick so this only applies if you're doing long haul if you really want to make some good money right so if you hit on the buildings and then hit research one things you really want to knock out um, is under your services you want to knock as many of these out as you can okay they're all different categories uh, comfort uh, entertainment safety ancillary costs they're all categorized differently so that way when you unlock these you can come over here to services okay and then you can start activating like this I've got revenue uh, ancillary revenue let me see here's entertainment I got that it obviously you want to do this one versus this one if they're both unlocked. Um, let's see what else. There. Ancillary. And so, do not do comfort because um, or uh, the expenses. That means that your yeah uh, your expenses will go up a little bit, but your comfort goes up. Remember that's designed for um, business and first class. I'm not doing that. I'm doing economy. So uh, let's see here infrastructure. You got all kinds of things here. Um, there's punctuality, um, and then onboard services, punctuality, entertainment. Now, here's a, the deal with these things. Once you've unlocked these things in the research, come over here and you activate them. What that means is that you turn them on. Okay, so if I decide to change something here, Let's say I want price attraction for whatever reason. I, I wouldn't do it, but I can tap on this, and then I activate it. What that will do is that that will, that will stay in place for 24 hours. If you don't mess with it, it just stays there. Okay, so be careful which one. I did, um, I did uh, what did I do one time? I think I did... Um, Actually, it's on here somewhere. You know what? It's under commercial support. If you're doing cargo. So one thing you'll notice on this, um, under services, you'll see that this passenger demand is 0%. Okay. If you're, if you're hauling passengers, this needs to stay at zero. If you're doing cargo, then turn these services on down here. See that? Speedy delivery, plus 60. Passenger demand, neg 3. Look at this one. Other attractive, 100, 100 points. Passenger demand, minus 5. Okay. If I'm hauling cargo, I'm not hauling passengers, so I want this to go down. You see how that works now? So you go down and... For me, I turned on everything. Now, you'll notice that I turned on some cargo stuff, but they were neutral. 
See, they were on this side. I didn't turn nothing on on this side. I don't want my passenger demand to go down. So it doesn't, it's a zero sum game for me. So um, let's see what else. So onboard services, you got your entertainments, ancillary. Look at the entertainment here, 110%. So that's what your services are for. So unlock those research stuff for services because that's how you're going to get your demands up. Staff is the final one. Whenever you, uh, let me just put you this way. Okay. I have a lot of planes I haven't delivered. Okay. The reason they're sitting here and not in the hangar is because if I do this, okay, I just accepted my plane. Look what happens to the passengers. Look what happens to my staff. That 747 300 just cost, just added, the game just added 932 employees. So what happens is, is that when you start adding planes, and you start delivering planes, and I'm just going to add some more just for the heck of it. Okay, just for the heck of it. Um, you'll notice I got some 7, 8. This is, I've got some lower demands that I want to fill, so I'll use a 787 for that. Um, I'll come over here to staff. Look at that number. Twenty-seven ninety-nine. So what you want to do is you need to hire them. Remember, these are union people. You want to move them to regular people. They cost less. So I'll come over here, swing all that across, okay, and then hire them. Now, I'm going to go back to my access staff. Now, one thing you'll notice is that all everything for me is maxed out. Okay, I don't. Re if I hit this button right here, this button right here. Okay, I don't really need to train anybody because I'm maxed out. So I'm going to leave them as recruits. However, if you're getting started and you want to bump up that pass that economy passenger demand, remember entertainment punctuality come all the way over here and look for entertainment and there it is so now if I come over here to recruits right I just hit this button right here on the very far left I hit recruits I'm gonna come way over here and look for entertainment and you see all this entertainment right here? Okay. Now, look what happens. Now, I'm not going to train anybody. I'm just showing this to you guys, all right? But look what happens when I move this up. Okay, obviously, I'm not going to do that because <laughs> that's going to cost me <laughs> $100 million. And look at look how much it went up, though. went from 5 500 to 900 damn so once and you can do this in little sections you know you don't have to do so many i always use the 500 rule because it's always the way you got to look at this is that for every 100 employees there's one manager okay so 500 employees five managers Okay, that's not that's not me guessing. That's what the game says. It's in the help section. Oh, did I just lose that? Okay, no, I didn't. Uh, I'm probably gonna make a separate video just on this, just so y'all can see that. Um, let's see here before I shut this off. Um, here's my ranking right here. Nineteen twenty-three. I'm not perfect. I only have nine route on nine hubs. So many players that's helped along the way. Um, and now I'm just helping you guys. So um, let's see what else. Um, oh, pricing. So when you come over here, network management, Jakarta, since we just put those new routes in, let me go all the way down. 
with zero. We just look at Nim. I keep thinking letter Nimoy. I don't know why that just it just looks like that to me. Um, let me hit this guy. <coughs> Excuse me. Manage prices. So I can hit manage prices. And right now the price of the ticket is thirty three forty two. What I can do is that I can audit this. Okay, and it's telling me, hey, we recommend you bump this up to seven thirty seven fifty six. Now I can do that. Just tap on it. Ah. Just tap on it. And then I can simulate it. Now what happens is, is that when I tap on this, this goes here, and then when I hit do not hit validate. This is do not hit this. Just hit simulate. This will factor in this new price right here. It'll take what's here, and then this is now in there. So now, basically, it'll be a new this right here. Uh, just be aware that when you up the price, your demand will slightly go down. Watch what happens when I hit the simulation button with the new price. And there it is. So if I stay at the current 3342 and I fill it all up, if I actually use all this up um, or this whole thing up, I'll make tw it'll be a $22 million route. Um, but if I bump up the price to this, it'll be this. But look at my demand. It went from 53 to 51. Now you can now don't ever go lower than this price. Okay, don't ever go lower than this price. Okay, um, but if you wanted to raise it, that's different. Now, don't get greedy. No, I just put 5000 in there. You know what it was. It was, what, 37 I can simulate that. If you get a little greedy on here and you don't hit simulate and you hit validate, Let's look to see what happens when I do that. It's going to be negative. And there it is. Okay. <laughs> my, <coughs> my turnover just went to 200,000. Okay, I'm going to the extreme here, of course, but um of course if you don't hit validate and you, know, you just back out, it it won't do nothing. Okay. So my point is is that you don't ever want to go lower than the audited amount recommended amount you always want to have that or higher because that that's always a good thing um and um i usually wait until i'm done and then i up it uh, because sometimes i can probably fit four planes or five it just depends and then i'll probably just up it but uh, i'll keep an eye on that i can always just change it right now and then just hit validate. I know this number is going to go down to 51 if I do that. But I'm going to hold off and make sure I get three planes on it. But that's just me. Um, you can always uh, up it now. It won't do anything. Um, let's see. What else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. Well, I hope I hope uh, the video is helpful. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else, um, but I'm sure you guys will have questions. Um, so with that, um, make those seven. Oh, I'll show you some different 24 hour, uh, 168 routes real quick here. <coughs> so, excuse me. I have in New York city, my shortest route when I first started is actually Cancun and I didn't even know I was making at 168. It just fit like a glove. I thought, oh, look at that. It fits perfect. And there is a, another variation of a 168. So the plane doesn't stop flying. It's just shorter. Okay, and then I can tap on this. I can see that it is an eight hour flight. You see that? So it's eight eight eight.
Okay, so that's why it fits. But you want to be careful not to go over. That's the problem with um, doing multiple flights. So this plane takes off and lands three times in one day. Now, be careful with that. That doesn't mean you can just start throwing in eight-hour uh, flights in one day. You want to make sure you have the demands for it. Okay, because then if you go negative, then maybe you can only do two. Or maybe you have three separate routes uh, that you can You can do Cancun, Monterey, uh, Guadalajara. What, I'm just throwing, using that as an example. Um, that's that one. And then I have another one in Narita. Narita has a lot of 24-hour routes. Uh, Narita was my second hub and let me see here uh, let me see let me just tap on one of these I'm just let's see here and so ah, see look at that that's not a that's not a 168 I've got one two three four five hours open on that one yeah I'm going to rebuild Narita um, <coughs> in fact I believe uh, gosh I'm trying to remember which one it was I want to say Dubai but I can't oh, there it is Here's Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Um, let me see here. Nope. Well, it was a 24-hour flight, and uh, it's just bugging me that I can't find it now. That's the problem when you have so many routes. You're just trying to keep track of what. There it is, Dubai. Typical, and I know I just put that um, this one in there. Let me see. Yeah, you know the thing is, is that I was looking. Uh, yeah, you see how everything's all over the place. That's not good. But uh, a 24-hour route just goes all the way across. See, I'm not perfect either. So uh, I just haven't had time to come back and, and fix this. I've moved on. And so as you progress in the hubs, you just learn more and more. And then, um, and then, and then you just go back and you just try to fix it. Maybe it was Cairo. I don't know why suddenly I can't find... None of these. Um, ah, there you go. So it's almost a 24-hour route, but it's full. The thing, though, is that I could rotate this with other. I have everything leaving now. The good thing is, is that I have demanding of 120 passengers. Here's the key. It's the same all the way down. So that one thing about doing, uh, here's my point to this, is that if you want to change your uh, prices of your flight, you need to be very careful with this, okay? Remember that you have this button down here, and this says Monday. So I want you to look at, uh, so right now my price to this is almost three grand because I've raised it already. This is what it was recommending, and I met, I bumped it up to this, and um, but look at my demand: Monday, 120; Tuesday, 120; and so on. It's even all the way down. This is the advantage of the 168 with the, with the seven routes. Okay, so everything's the same. Here is why this is important. If I change the price here. To say three thousand, 
Now, there is a mathematical way to figure this out, but I don't want to make this too long. So it's 3,000. Now my demand went from 120 to 91. I can probably bump this up to maybe uh, 3,100. Okay. The point is, is that when I hit validate, when I hit the validate button, that price affects the entire week. Okay. So if you have on, say, Monday, 120, and then you tap on this, and then you go to Wednesday, and this says 1,000, that means your demand is, is all over the place. It's not even all the way down. At that point, either you have to put another plane in it just for that day, find other routes to fill that in, and you see how it gets all crazy. Then you can probably work on the price. Um, so that's one of those things you just got to be careful with, okay? So um, let's see here. And I, I can, I'm, I've got more videos. I just haven't posted them yet. But I know you guys were asking about the 168, and I probably went a little too far. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am a, I am an instructor in the real world, so I, I have a tendency to to be a chatty Cathy. So I apologize. Um, well, um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions or if you want me to show you guys anything, um, just shoot me a message. It's no problem. Um, and then we can go from there. So I hope this video was informative and go make that cheddar guys. Thanks for listening. Talk to y'all later. Bye.